Hello and welcome to another episode of Gear Toward Gear. My name is Sean and I am so glad you're here because today I get to pick one of these knives that do not belong to me and I get to keep one all for myself from now until the end of time. But the caveat is I have to then replace it with a knife of my own. Yes, this is the give a knife, take a knife. And this is the 2019-2020 edition hosted by your friend and mine, Mr. JT from JT's Knife Life. So thank you so much, JT, for getting this going and for graciously inviting me to be a part of it. So if you're not familiar with how this works, I'm gonna leave a link below to the video that JT did kind of kicking this off, but I'll give you kind of the, the short version here. So a, a, a give a knife, take a knife is simply a concept in which a group of people takes products, it can be anything, in this case knives, and you pass them around throughout a group and each time it, it gets to somebody they take one and they replace it with something else of, of theirs and eventually all of this gets back to the person it started with which would be JT so JT will end up with uh, six knives just like he started with but they may all be different so every knife that started this belonged to JT and we'll see what ends up going back to him when this is all said and done. There's about 15 people involved here, so it'll be really interesting to kind of follow this along and see what people choose, what they put back in. So it should be a lot of fun. And the really cool thing about this is that anybody can do this with anything. So you don't have to have a YouTube channel or an Instagram account. If you have a group of buddies who are all into the same thing, or if you have a group of friends on Instagram or Facebook who are into knives or comic books or stamps, cigars, it doesn't matter. You, you can do this. Um, just have somebody kind of organize it, start with a, a group of, of the product and just send it around. And uh, it'll ultimately come back to the person it started with. So again, in this case, there's about 15 people. A lot of us are on YouTube and a lot of people you probably know. And some are on Instagram, people you may not know. So it's a good chance to get to know some new people. And I am the second person to receive all of these knives. The first person was Machete J on Instagram. I will leave a link to his Instagram account so you can see uh, what he chose and what he put back in, which I'll briefly touch on. And the next person after me will be Stasa23. So if you're not following him, I will leave a link to his channel below so that you can follow along and see, uh, see what happens. So I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. And again, thanks JT for inviting me. Um, so yeah, I've got six knives in front of me and I get to pick one. Which one do I choose? Which one do you think I'm going to pick? And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about each knife. I'm going to try to be brief, uh, but I'd be interested to hear kind of what your prediction is or was, whether or not it ends up being what I, what I choose. So on the left here, we have a Civivi Elementum in gray G10. Absolutely beautiful. Love these knives. Nice hollow grind. One of the best budget small EDC knives of the year, in my opinion. Can't say a bad thing about the Civivi Elementum. And those go for about $50, and that's going to be D2 steel. Next to it is a very similarly sized knife, and that is a Browse Blades offering called the Spectre. It's a frame lock, as you can see, with G10 on one side. Uh, D2 steel on this one as well. Also a hollow grind. Uh, pretty darn comfy. The price tag is going to be a bit higher, of course. This is about a $130 knife from Browse Blades in the Spectre. Down here, we have a knife from Boker. This is called the Kihon, and it's a pretty cool knife. It's a flipper. It is a titanium frame lock with a G10 scale on the other side. And this one has been customized by JT himself. This one uses uh, D2 steel, actually, so we're seeing a theme here. But all of this anodization that you see on the pocket clip, the uh, over travel, my mind's going blank, uh, disc, the thumb studs, the hardware, all of that was done by JT. So it's kind of got his hand touch, which is pretty cool. Um, good action, nice kind of snappy flipper. So that's a cool knife. And those go for about $85. Above it is a Spider Co. This is the Insistent. It's part of their budget line. It is a liner lock. G10, both sides, it's going to be 8CR13 on the blade steel, and that is it. That is the Spyderco Insistent. So there it is. 
All right, what is next? Let's go over here to this little case. Uh, so we have a traditional uh, slip joint pattern. This is a case teardrop, just a single blade slip joint with a half stop. Uh, a really good looking pattern. I do like the teardrop pattern quite a bit. And uh, this is a good example of a case knife in terms of quality control, centering, things like that. Uh, this, this particular example was done quite well. So you got a case teardrop. And then right here we have an HK. And this is called the Mini Pika 2. And these were, uh, they used to be manufactured by Benchmade, then HK. Uh, but also a budget knife between $30 and $50, maybe even as high as $60, depending on when we're talking about. Uh, 9CR13 steel, these are not currently being made. Um, and a couple of these are not currently being made, but that is the HK Pika 2, uh, the Mini Pika 2, or Pikachu, uh, whatever you want to call it. So the idea here is I pick whichever one I want and I put something in its place that's roughly of equal value. And, you know, the, the prices do range a little bit and it's not, it doesn't have to be direct one-to-one. -one. I could take this $85 knife and put back in a $50 knife. Or I could take this you know, $40 knife and put back in a $60 knife. It doesn't, you know, it's all in good fun. And as long as it's done in good faith, you know, that, that's what matters. So let's start eliminating some knives. Let's get rid of a couple. So I was tempted immediately to choose the Elementum, which is silly because I already have this knife. I have three of these. I have this exact one in gray G10. I also have it in black and in Rosewood, but I just, I love them so much that I, I seriously thought very hard about taking this to maybe use as a gift item or a giveaway item, but I figured I've kind of been there with the, with the Elementum, so let me save that for somebody else. Somebody else needs to experience the Elementum. Uh, and then this one, the Browse Blades Spectre, very similar in size and form factor and just overall functionality, frankly, to the Elementum. And for that reason, it didn't jump out at me because this would basically do for me what the Elementum already does. And I just got my first Browse Blades knife that's very, very sentimental. So it almost felt weird. <laughs> it sounds so dumb, but it almost felt weird to like, like it's too soon. <laughs> it's too soon to have another Browse Blades knife. So I'm gonna pass on the Browse Blades Spectre. What is next? Let's look at this Spyderco. I love Spyderco, you guys probably know that. Uh, this knife doesn't work for me ergonomically at all, um, which is unfortunate because I, I do like it, but this knife is designed in such a way that for most people you just have to use that forward finger choil because if you choke back, it's like a two finger knife and is very much not, not very usable. But when I use the forward finger choil, it just feels, it almost feels foreign. It just doesn't work with my big extra large hands. So the Spyderco Insistent uh, is not gonna make the cut. So what's left? Let's move on to this uh, traditional pattern. Uh, I don't love the color scheme. It, it looks beautiful, kind of the, the yellow to green. It's just not my personal taste in terms of color. If this was blue or red or amber or any kind of like jig bone, I, I hands down would have chosen this. Uh, it's only because of the color that I'm not choosing this. And the reason why I would potentially pick something like this is that although I do love traditional knives, I do love slip joints, this is not the type of knife that I would generally go and purchase for myself. I tend to purchase folding knives that are flippers or thumb hole openers or, or something like that. I don't buy a lot of true traditional patterns for myself. So this, this I think will be a great opportunity for somebody in this group of like 15 of us to get a nice traditional in their collection, but that person is not gonna be me. So that leaves two, the HK and the Kihon. So the HK, as I mentioned, uh, Benchmade manufactured the Pika and the Pika 2 a long time ago, and it would have had the Benchmade logo on it. Um, it was part of their red class, which they used to have. And the Kihon is, I think they still make these, uh, is, a, is a great knife too. Um, and I really like both of them. And I am gonna choose the HK. And that was a tough call because 
Machete J just put this into the group of knives. He, he took an HK out and he put this HK back in. So part of me really wanted to take something else to, to keep the group of six changing. But when it really came down to it, I wanted to pick something that I would appreciate, that I would carry, that I would use. And this knife really spoke to me for a few reasons. One, I really like FRN handles. If you've seen any of my Instagram posts about my Spyderco knives, I, I tend to really prefer the FRN uh, variations of Spyderco knives. I love back locks. I love a thumb hole opener. I really, really love a hollow grind. So there's a lot of components here that just really speak to my preference. Uh, it's got a deep carry style clip that clearly doesn't carry super, super deep, but it's just, it's my style. And I really like the history. Again, having been a Benchmade product, then a kind of HK made by Benchmade product, then I think eventually it was just strictly an HK product. And they're no longer in production as far as I know. But if you look at it, so here's a Delica, check this out. Look at the handle shape between the Delica and the Pika 2. Pretty darn similar, don't you think? Let's look at the Spyderco. This is a, a bird. It's a Kara Kara rescue knife. But just look at the kind of the profile of the handles. Pretty similar, huh? It almost to me feels like a Spyderco design like tripped and fell and landed in, in an HK factory somewhere. So it just has all those elements of a Spyderco that I really love. It was originally kind of conceived and manufactured by Benchmade, which is a company that I really love. And I just like that, the history, kind of the progression of this design is interesting to me. And it's the type of knife that I would use and I think is super useful. Uh, similar to something like, for example, the Sentafonte, just a nice lightweight, slim carry with a pretty thin blade. Um, and I'll definitely get use out of it. So I have chosen the HK Mini Pika 2. I am keeping that guy. That's my knife now. So I need to replace the Mini Pika 2 with something else. And I'm going to replace it with a knife from Kubi. Now this knife is pretty cool. It comes in a, this awesome case and also a cardboard box that this goes into. Um, the knife is off to the side here, but this alone could draw somebody in, right? Because when you get things like this, it makes it feel a little fancier, right? Um, the knife in question that I will be uh, putting in is the Kubi Eris. Now, this knife is one that I think will be interesting to see how people react to it because you've got some pretty recognizable companies, right? You've got Civivi, which has become very recognizable very quickly. Uh, Browse Blades, of course, Boker, Spider Co. Case, household names. Kubi, a little newer uh, player, right? But what I love about this knife is that it has really, really high quality materials. It looks, feels, and performs above its price point. These go for about 50 bucks. So if you're looking for a good $50 knife, um, this is pretty, pretty incredible in my opinion. So you've got really excellent quality, really, really nice, genuine carbon fiber scales that are full carbon fiber. There's no laminate, um, both sides just looks gorgeous. The pocket clip is titanium. It's not stainless or aluminum. Same thing with the backspacer. It's genuine titanium. So again, high quality materials. The action on this thing is crazy smooth, both the flipping action and the kind of drop shutty smooth action. Quality control is on point. The blade steel is D2 and the way they executed the stone wash on this blade is so well done. They just crushed it in the finishing department. The factory edge is perfectly even and wicked, wicked sharp. And it, it's just, it's one of those knives that you get in your hand, you're like, that that's a $50 knife. Um, and so I'm curious if, if it'll speak to anybody in the group uh, to see the materials, the aesthetic, the case that it comes with. Like, will those things make somebody, like, will it draw somebody towards that knife? who might otherwise not, um, you know, be into or, or be exploring a brand like Kubi. Um, so that is my entry into the give a knife, take a knife. The Kubi Eris 
so I will be packing all of these up. I'm going to take my Pika 2, which is mine now, and ship the rest of these off to Stasa23. So be sure to go check out his channel again if you want to follow along. And I'm sure once he uh, picks his knife and, and replaces it, he will then probably provide information on who's after him. If not, you can always default to JT on Instagram or on YouTube. All the links will be below. But again, keep in mind that anybody can do this and it's a lot of fun. It can be done with anything. JT mentioned that his dad does these with some of his friends with cigars and, and fishing gear. You can literally do it with anybody. As long as you have a group of people and a common interest, that is all you need to, to do one of these. So it's been a lot of fun. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon.